G'day everyone, my name is Hoi and in this video I'm going to show you two ways to invert color of text in Photoshop. I'll be using two images, one for the black and white effect and one for the color effect. And the best part of it is that the effect is dynamic and the text is still editable. So if you want to follow along, the links to the images are in the description. Okay, so let's open the file that we'll be working with. So let's go to File, Open. And let's select the one that starts with butterfly, double click on that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to press Command or Control 0 just to fit it to screen. Now immediately you'll see that I've got a transparent background. Just to make it easy for us to work with, I'm going to add a white background to this. So I'm going to go to my adjustment layer icon, go to solid color, and I'm going to select a white color and press OK. I'm going to move it down, click and drag this so it's below the butterfly layer. Now the next thing to do is to add some text. So we can go to our text icon here or press T on our keyboard and click once on the canvas. And I've got this contextual taskbar here. If you don't have it, you can invoke it by going to Window and just make sure that contextual taskbar is selected down here. Otherwise, you can always use the uh, options bar here to control your text font and size. Here, I'm going to type in what you saw in the intro, that cheesy line, come fly with me. Now, you can see that there's black on black and it's difficult to see. Now, this is where the color of your text makes all the difference. So instead of black, I'm going to select all of my text and then change it click on this, change it to white, and then press OK. Now obviously we have a problem now because we can't see it, but don't worry, don't freak out just yet. I'm going to increase the size of my font here. We can always increase it later, but while we're here, we may as well do it here. Something like 215 is OK. Once I'm OK with that, let's click on this check mark and it's kind of disappeared. Don't freak out, don't freak out. Let's go to our text layer here and we want this text layer to be above the butterfly layer. Let's click and drag it all the way up here so you can see this thin blue line here. Once you see it, let go of your mouse and let's use our move tool here, V on your keyboard or you can come over here to select it via the icon. And now you can click and drag. You can see that it's kind of not really having the effect that we want, right? I promised you a inverted text. So the next key thing then is to change the blend mode. Let's go to our blend mode here, click and drag it down here. You can either select difference or exclusion. Now what difference does is takes the pixel value of the blend layer, which here is the text layer and subtract it from the base layer, which is the butterfly layer. I'm going into a little bit more technical aspects of blend mode, which is a little bit beyond the scope of this tutorial. But if you want to learn the technical aspects of blend mode, I have started a series on it, which covers the pass through normal and darkened blend modes, but I just haven't had the time to finish off the series. So if you're interested to see the whole series, leave me a comment and I'll see when I can complete it. Now back to this, as I say, you can either select difference or exclusion. So it doesn't really make a difference, no pun intended. So I'm going to click on difference here and I'm just going to increase the size of my text. Uh, there's a number of ways you can do it, but I'm going to use the transform tool. So I'm going to make sure that my text layer is selected, hit command or control T on my keyboard and these bounding box will show up. I'm going to click and drag this to resize it. Now I press shift to constrain the uh, portion of this proportion, I should say, and something like this. And once I'm done, I'm going to press done here. And now with my text layer still selected, I can move this around, right? So the great thing is that it's dynamic, as I said in the intro. And so wherever I move this, the color changes. The other good thing is that the text is dynamic. It's still a text layer. So if I want to change this, I can do so, come fly with you and press this check button to accept that. 
and the effect is still the same. Isn't that amazing? Now let's show you how to do that with a color image. Let's open up our next file. Let's go to File, Open, and now select the one that starts with Street Art. Double click on that. Let's zoom in a little bit, Command or Control Zero. Now let's add text to this picture. So T on our keyboard, click once on our layer here. I've already got white selected. So remember, one of the key thing is to make sure that your text is white. So if it's not white, for whatever reason, just click on that and just make sure that it's white and press OK. So let's type in whatever we want. I'm not going to use the same cheesy line that I used in the intro. So maybe another cheesy line. So whatever we want. So literally, I'm typing whatever we want. So let's select all that, click and drag, and let's just increase the size of it here. And once we're happy with it, something like this, I'm going to press this check mark here. Just make sure that our move tool is selected and reposition this somewhere in the middle of the canvas. If I go to my blend modes here and select difference, we don't have the black and white effect on the text. So what we need to do is somehow convert the text to black and white. And what we're going to do is use a threshold adjustment layer. So let's go to our adjustment layer icon here, go all the way down. Well, the third one from the bottom, not all the way down, select threshold. So what threshold does is forces whatever pixel value from here, this tab here, all the way to the left to black, and then whatever's from here, to here to white. So it just forces it to be black and white. Now we want only the text to be black and white, not the whole image. So we can easily do that by using a clipping mask. So let's go to a threshold layer here and press Option or Alt and just hover between these two layers here so you can get this icon with a down arrow. Once you get it, click once here and then it clips it to this text layer. Now we're back to where we started. So why did we do all that? Well, we've got another step to do. Well, we've got a number of steps. The next immediate step is we need to group this, this text layer by itself. So let's select this layer by clicking on it. And we can press Command G, that's Control G if you're on a PC to group it, or you can press this folder icon here. Now that has created the group. However, the issue is that the layer is not in the right order. So what we want to do then is make this text layer inside this group here. So click and drag it so it's inside this group layer. And then this threshold layer has to be on top, outside of this group layer. So click and drag it so you can see this thin blue line. Don't drop it when you can see this blue box. And now we're almost there. We need to reinstate the clipping mask. So hold Option or Alt and go somewhere between the two layers and then just click there. Now we've got what we want here. Now let's check whether it's still dynamic. So let's uh, select this group here and with our move tool selected, if it's not selected, press V on your keyboard and then just click and drag. And you can see that we've got the same effect. Now, if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that it's got a dithering effect, these dotted effects here. And that's because it's got some level of transparency there. If that's what you want, then great. But if you want a smooth black and white effect, then let me show you how to do it. We're going to add a levels adjustment layer. Let me just zoom out a little bit, Command or Control Zero, and let's create the levels. So let's go to our adjustment layer icon and select levels. Now it's <laughs> put in the levels inside the group here, which is not what I wanted. So let's click and drag it just above the group layer. It's got a clipping mask already. Now, if it doesn't, remember what we need to do, press Alt or Option, and then just hover between these layers and then just click once here. And I've just destroyed it. So let me reinstate it. And I'm going to use this black point here and then slide it from the left to the right and just watch the left hand side here. You can go all the way to the right until you have it to the extent that you want it. So something like this, I can obviously zoom in while I do it. Let's go in a little bit more. And you can see that if I turn this off, you can see that it's got a dithering effects, these dotted effects 
if I turn on this effect, it's got a more smooth effect. Another important thing to watch out for is that the positioning of the levels layer is very important. It needs to be immediately above this group layer here. If I move it on top of this, you see that the effect goes away, right? So if I do it again, so this is immediately above this group and not immediately above. So just make sure that the levels layer is immediately above. Now I also promised you that I'll show you how to change the color of this. We need another adjustment layer. So I want the adjustment layer on top of this layer here. So I'm going to click on this. Not that we're going to do anything with this threshold adjustment layer. I just want the next effect to be on top of that. So let's go to our adjustment layer icon here. And now we're going to use the hue saturation adjustment layer. Again, let's make sure that it's clipped. So Option or Alt, hover in between these two layers and click once here once you see this down arrow icon. In the Properties panel, we're going to click Colorize because that's what we want to do. And let's adjust the saturation, something like 80. And then our lightness, and this is where the magic happens, will start to change the color, right? So if you want to change the hue, uh, let's click on this and you can change it to whatever hue that you want. So I'm going to do maybe a cyan, a light cyan, and then um, you can adjust the saturation and you can adjust it however you want. And the best thing again is that it's all dynamic and editable. So if I click on the group text layer here and I want to move it around because I'm not happy with the positioning, I can do that. I can also double click on this text layer and then change my text, uh, whatever we have maybe, and press the check mark. Now as with the levels adjustment layer, the positioning of the hue saturation layer is also important. It needs to be above the threshold layer. So if I move this around, you see that the effect will go away. You see, now it's in between the threshold and the levels the effect has gone now. So you see that it's black and white. Now if I move that to under the levels, it's still black and white. So just make sure that the order of your hue saturation, threshold and levels are exactly the same as what you see here and make sure that it's clipped. And there you have it, two ways to invert the color of your text in Photoshop, one using black and white effect and one for a color effect. If you liked this video or learned something new, please like, subscribe, comment or hit the bell icon so you can get notified for when my next video is out.